Hi, welcome back to another episode of Girls, 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 and today I'm being joined by... I'm Katie Zepieri. <laughs> so uh, give a brief introduction of yourself, who you are, what do you do? So my name's Katie, and I'm really proud to be the founder of Girl Talk Speakers Bureau, and we basically represent women from a wide range of industries, mm -hmm. CEOs, uh, venture capitalists, engineers, and we help connect them to opportunities uh, across North America for professional speaking. Mm -hmm. That's wicked awesome. <laughs> So, uh, first question, if you were an ice cream flavor, what would you do and why? <laughs> um, you know what, I'm just going to go with like the standard choice that I would order, which is cookies and cream. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm substantial and I have a little bit of savory with a little bit of sweet. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love cookies and cream. <laughs> <laughs> so the serious questions, um, in your opinion, what is the best and worst part about being a girl? I've always looked at being a girl as a positive trait. Mm -hmm. So it's really interesting along the journey of starting a girls organization. I think people had an idea that life was a lot harder and more challenging for me. Mm -hmm. And so I completely recognize that there are challenges that girls and women face mm -hmm. across the globe. I believe in living life with a um, non-victim mentality, but seeing how can I use my experiences to actually shape and change things. Mm -hmm. And so when I was growing up and in my high school it was very much like a mean girls uh, culture yeah. um, it was very clicky I really strove to change that and the best way to change that is by showing kindness and yeah. encouraging people to take leadership roles and love who they are and so I think that it's challenging there are challenges that come from from being a female but I also think that if we tap into that the same things that people think might be weaknesses can actually be our strength mm -hmm. That's awesome. What is your definition of success and do you think you've achieved it? Wow. Um, <laughs> I honestly, I really admire people who have a balanced life. And I often find myself asking that question of people that I admire, you know, how do you balance your life? And a lot of people will say, oh, you know, you'll never achieve full balance, right? Mm -hmm. Like something's always going to be kind of pulled. And, and my sort of mission is, am I going to be able to um, hopefully be blessed to be a mom, have a happy marriage and be able to run a, a thriving business? And so for me, a happy life is a fulfilled life. I want to feel like I am using uh, the talents and uh, passions that God's given me mm -hmm. to make a difference and I want to feel like I'm present for my family and putting those sorts of values as a priority mm -hmm. and so I love the idea of trying to fill your life in all of these areas so every day in my calendar I'm making room for having that quality time with the people that I love and care about mm -hmm. while also making sure that I'm moving the, the needle forward on my business yeah yeah definitely balance is super important especially with all the stuff going on phones not, and yeah, yeah. Uh, just like distractions <laughs> Netflix yeah. like it's you know what it's really easy to be distracted and yeah, it's yeah. it's we're in an age of distractions and uh, the challenge is to try and and create space where you limit those distractions mm -hmm. so you can really use your time productively. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So who or what inspires you? I'm inspired by my mom. Mm -hmm. And um, my mom had a very successful career before she she gave birth to, to me. I'm the eldest child. Uh. <laughs> I have all the eldest child traits. Yeah. Um, but uh, she was working her way up as a platform artist for L'Oreal. Um, and was traveling and doing hair shows and speaking on stages and all the latest trends. And when she um, got pregnant with me, she made a commitment that she wanted to dedicate her time to, to her family. Mm -hmm. And so she actually stayed at home for 20 years and raised myself, my brother, and my sister. Um, and I admire her because she was able to balance so many different things and after that time at home, many people would be intimidated to go back out and try again. Mm -hmm. But she actually, <laughs> very shortly after she decided to go back into the workforce, put herself in politics. Wow. Um, got elected as a school board trustee, um, you know, got hired as a supervisor at the YMCA, mm -hmm. and she now runs her own boxing gym. <laughs> So uh, my mom's got like a second degree black belt. She kicks butt. Uh, she's a strong person. And I've just seen how she dealt with every single challenge, whether it's personal or professional, with a lot of strength and a lot of grace. Yeah, yeah, your mom sounds awesome. <laughs> she is awesome. <laughs> what is your biggest regret? 
You know, I think there was a time period, late teens, early 20s, mm -hmm. where you're kind of rushing to go to the next phase of life. Mm -hmm. And you start pushing away from your family. It comes from a good place. You're ready to kind of start your own life. But I think I would regret some of the ways that I treated my family during that time. Mm -hmm. I just, I'm, I'm thankful to still have my family that I can do this and just give them a bigger hug and thank them for all the sacrifices that they made for me. Mm -hmm. Definitely, yeah. I think um, teens especially, it's hard because, you know, we're going off to college and some people might be going a bit far. So it's kind of, yeah, it's like this rush to get, um, get into the real world and start doing your own thing. And embrace yeah. where you are. Yeah, like, exactly. we're always yeah. rushing for the next thing, but there's beauty in every moment and every age. So what is your proudest achievement? <sighs> Might be hard to just pick one. <laughs> yeah, I'm proud. You know what? Because this is related for, for a high school audience, I was very proud of how I finished grade 12. Mm -hmm. And it's because I had such a terrible experience in high school. So as I mentioned, my school was very clicky, lots of mean girl culture. Um, but personally, I experienced severe bullying. Mm -hmm. And I think it took a while to actually unpack just how traumatic that was. Mm -hmm. Because when we're in a situation where we're dealing with that kind of uh, daily rumors, gossip, oh, yeah. um, stares, like people really going out of their way to put you down, mm -hmm. you kind of put up a guard and step into this like defense mechanism of just going about your day, just putting your head down. And I didn't realize how much of that had actually impacted me in the way that I saw myself mm -hmm. and the way that I saw the world. Like I would have groups of people going up to those who I had talked to um, and just blatantly asking them like, why are you talking to Katie Zapiri? Nobody likes her. Um, I had people like in the middle of a uh, speech that I did running for student council in grade 11, somebody yelled something out in the middle of my talk. I never actually found out what it was, mm -hmm. but the entire crowd burst into laughter. And then I was walking down the hallways and heard a bunch of people saying, don't vote for Katie Zapiri. Um, mm -hmm. And these are just like small examples of a very, very big problem that, mm -hmm. um, that I faced. Mm -hmm. And I'm so grateful for the mentors who lifted me through that time. And I decided that I wasn't going to lay down <laughs> and give up. I was going to push harder. Mm -hmm. So I got involved in every club and team from sports to music to reading the morning announcements to student council. You know, even when I felt that it was like a popularity contest that I wasn't going to win, mm -hmm. I still worked really hard to build my skills, find my voice, give back. When I found the Human Rights Club at my school, mm -hmm. it was just like things started to click because now I could actually use that energy and knowing what it felt like to um, be the underdog mm -hmm. and actually help give back to somebody else. So yeah. when grade 12 came, I, um, I had been doing my research and I saw a number of scholarships that I wanted to apply for. Mm -hmm. And I applied to everyone and I'm, I'm so proud of myself for having the courage to do that because mm -hmm. you have to believe in yourself in order for there to be a chance of those kinds of, of yeah, victories. Yeah. And when I got that phone call, um, it was about this time uh, actually, oh. that I had won the TD Canada Trust uh, scholarship, wow. $75,000, yeah. pick any university in Canada. Um, yeah. I was one of 20 students across the country. Yeah. That was a moment that I'm never, ever going to forget. It felt like such a special moment because of what I had gone through. Mm -hmm. And I, I was in tears and I was just like, you know what? This is what it feels like to persevere. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, nobody else gets to define you. You get to define yourself. Yeah, and yeah. that single moment has given me confidence to continue to put myself forward, continue to apply for things, mm -hmm. continue to take new opportunities, and that's carried throughout the rest of my life. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. And I think the work you're doing with that now is helping a lot of girls who might be in similar situations um, as you back then. And I'm trying to speak to them. I'm trying to yeah, find, you yeah. know, uh, all of us. It doesn't matter who you are. Even the people who I thought had it all figured out in high school, they didn't. Everybody's struggling mm -hmm. and everybody's battling to try and find who they are and where their place is in the world. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think like when we choose kindness and when we choose listening and understanding, mm -hmm. um, we actually create like a much better place for everyone. Yeah, yeah. What is your advice to younger girls? Um, specifically maybe thinking of going into your profession or just life in general? <laughs> I think, you know what, we hear so many reports and studies about um, 
some of the challenges that women and girls do face mm -hmm. and um, you know things are talked about like the pay gap or mm -hmm. um, different industries that are lacking female female representation um, women have different pressures let's be real when it comes to things like politics and that yeah. um, you know being seen as having like a very strong opinion can be seen as a negative mm -hmm. you're also criticized for your appearance a lot more than than a male might be yeah. but taking all of those things into consideration the best way to change that is to be the one who is the leader in mm -hmm. that field or industry yeah. and so I would say that whatever path you choose and it's okay if you don't know what path that is yet mm -hmm. I also think that that's a lie that we tell ourselves that actually hurts us is that mm -hmm. everybody has this like burning desire passion <laughs> and they know exactly what path they're gonna take and exactly where they're gonna be in five years <laughs> very very few people that's like the minority of people who feel that way mm -hmm. Most of us um, fall into where we're meant to be. Mm -hmm. And that's the same for me. I, I did not know uh, what direction I would take. I did not see myself as an entrepreneur um, at the time. And I went all throughout my university degree thinking that I would go somewhere completely different. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say to chase your curiosity. Mm -hmm. What is it that makes you light up? What is it that gets you excited? And I would also say that in absolutely every situation in your life, look for ways to add a little bit extra. There's a quote that I love to live my life by, the difference between ordinary and extraordinary is that little extra. Mm -hmm. Put a little extra effort and enthusiasm and excitement and hard work into every area of your life. Mm -hmm. What would your life look like if you took 5% more responsibility for each of these things? Don't just do the bare minimum. Mm -hmm. Even when it's working a job that you might be bored at or it's minimum wage, put in the extra work. Yeah. I would always take every opportunity that I could whether I was selling books at the bookstore or working as a clown <laughs> that was my very first job when I was 13 years old I was a part-time clown working for kids parties and I, I would always try and add a little bit of energy and that actually led me to opportunities while I was working at Cole's bookstore I reached out to the CEO of Indigo Books and Music mm -hmm. ended up getting a chance to meet with her face to face mm -hmm. and she ended up becoming and, and their company ended up becoming a platinum sponsor for one of our girl talk events wow. um, when I was working as a brand ambassador handing out flyers for different com companies trying to pay the bills um, I would show up on time I would show up eager I would go out of my way to learn about the companies that I was representing and try and have like additional facts and information and instead of just being like, here's a flyer, here's a flyer, mm -hmm. I would actually like get excited about the product and really try and show it and demonstrate it. Mm -hmm. The clients really liked that and mm -hmm. saw that I was taking this extra effort, wanted to hire me directly. And so that's how I started my event company, you yeah, know? Yeah. So every single thing, every action, positive action that you take to put yourself out there, mm -hmm to do the little extras makes a big difference and helps lead you to where you're meant to be. Mm -hmm. And the final note that I'll say, I have lots of advice to give for young people, but girls in particular, yeah. is be a problem solver. Don't just be a passive consumer of content and what's happening in the world. Mm -hmm. Look for ways that you can actually create value mm -hmm. and solve the issues. Many of the greatest inventions and businesses and ideas came from people just living their ordinary lives, yeah. seeing a problem and thinking, you know what? I can find a solution to this. I can create something and taking that ownership and responsibility, whether that's like a social justice, human rights issue, whether that's something to do with like a business or technological thing, don't be afraid to take ownership for the problems that you see in the world and decide that you can do something to change them. Mm -hmm, definitely. I think seizing every opportunity, it'll lead to something bigger potentially. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's great. Thank you so much for meeting with me. It was such a pleasure. Thanks for yeah, having thank me. Thank you.